Life gets busy. Has The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho been gathering dust on your bookshelf? Instead, learn the key insights now. We're scratching the surface here. If you don't already have the book, get the audiobook for free using the link in the description or the app to learn the juicy details. Story Shot Summary and Analysis of The Alchemist a fable about following your dream by Paolo Coelho. About Paolo Coelho. Paolo Coelho is a Brazilian writer who specializes in spiritually inspired novels. Coelho had a troubled childhood and rebelled against his Catholic parents' religion. Subsequently, they committed him to a psychiatric hospital on three occasions. Paolo used this hardship and his spiritual awakening while on his 500-mile journey on Santiago de Compostela, as inspiration for his books. Before becoming a writer, Coelho engaged with multiple professions. For example, he has worked as a lawyer, songwriter, actor, journalist, and theater director. The Alchemist was initially a slow seller but has since become the most translated book by a living author. Coelho lets the world guide his writing. His ritual is to begin writing a novel and he sees a white feather in January of an odd year. Part 1, Section 1 Dreaming is what makes life interesting. The main character in The Alchemist is a shepherd, Santiago. The story starts with Santiago pondering the nature of his work. Santiago is close to his animals. He calls each of them by name, his schedule revolves around them and he has conversations with them. Recently, Santiago's conversations have been about a girl that he met a year ago. He met her at the town that is the next destination on his journey. Santiago hasn't stopped thinking about this girl all year. She is a merchant's daughter he met while delivering wool to a shop she was browsing. This shop owner bought it from Santiago and encouraged him to return one year later. Hence, Santiago was on the way back to the town where he first met this girl. Santiago views his shepherding life as providing him with considerable freedom. He allows his sheep to lead the way, and eventually, he finds a new path. However, Santiago realizes this is not a real discovery. He had once dreamed of traveling the world. Santiago accepts that dreaming about what you don't have is what makes life interesting. This is why he has been dreaming for the last year about seeing this girl again. Part 1, Section 2, Achieve Your Personal Legend Personal Legends Once Santiago reaches Tarifa, his last stop before the city, where his dream girl lives, he visits an old gypsy woman. This woman claims she can interpret dreams. Santiago has had a recurring dream where a child shows him the location of some treasure. However, Santiago wakes up just before he finds out exactly where it is located. The gypsy woman tells Santiago that this treasure is legitimate. She explains to Santiago that dreams are a language used by the soul of the world to communicate with people. The woman accepts her payment as one-tenth of the treasure when Santiago finds it. Upon leaving the gypsy woman's house, Santiago sits in the plaza to read a book. An old man comes up to Santiago and tells him that he has read the same book before. The man reveals himself to be Melchizedek, who is the king of Salem. He bestows wisdom upon Santiago. This wisdom is that the world believes that fate prevents people from achieving their personal legend. Personal legends are dreams that individuals have wanted to achieve their entire life. Just as the gypsy woman says, Melchizedek explains that personal legends come from the soul of the world. However, fear and routine obscure our personal legends. Melchizedek explains to Santiago that he only appears to people who are ready to achieve their dreams. Plus, he can tell Santiago about the treasure in his dream if he gives him one-tenth of his sheep. Pursuing your dreams. After deliberation, Santiago decides his sheep and the merchant's daughter were merely steps on the way to his personal legend, in other words, the treasure. Therefore, 
he decides to sell his flock immediately and gives Melchizedek six sheep for free. Melchizedek tells Santiago to always follow the omens. Plus, he gives Santiago two stones. One stone was black and called Urim, meaning, yes, and the other stone was white and called Thummim, meaning, no. These stones are there in case Santiago is struggling to understand the omens. With the money from selling his flock, Santiago buys a ticket from Tarifa to Africa and sets sail to find the treasure. Upon arriving in Tangiers, Santiago realizes that obtaining his personal legend will be more complicated than he first imagined. For starters, he does not speak Arabic. While sitting in a bar alone, a young man approaches Santiago. In Spanish, the man offers to help him get to the pyramids where the treasure lies. However, when the young man offers to help Santiago buy a camel, he robs Santiago of all his money. Santiago weeps with despair. He had nothing, but he asked the stones if Melchizedek's blessing was still with him. The answer was yes. So, Santiago continued on his journey toward obtaining his dreams. Wandering the streets in search of opportunities, Santiago came across a crystal shop struggling financially. Santiago cleans the front window, and the owner subsequently offers him a job. The owner is willing to pay Santiago enough to save up for a new flock of sheep and a passage back to his home. Santiago agrees and takes the job. Personal Legends Explained Personal legends are a common theme in The Alchemist. Throughout the book, personal legends serve as the only means by which an individual can live a satisfying life. Those who put off their personal legends will suffer from regret and fail to experience the wealth associated with achieving them. Additionally, following your personal legends will allow the world to bestow favors upon you. The novel even explains that natural elements must aim to achieve their personal legends. For example, alchemy involves turning metal into its own personal legend, gold. Part 2, Section 1, Everything Happens for a Reason after obtaining enough money to buy another flock and travel home, Santiago has a conversation with the crystal shop owner. He asks for the owner's blessing to go home. Although the owner gives his blessing, he also tells Santiago that he knows he will not return to Spain. Instead, he knew Santiago would continue to pursue his personal legend. Santiago accepted that he was far from home and far closer to the pyramids and the treasure. Therefore, he took a chance and started living in a caravan in a desert to search for the treasure. While living here, he meets an Englishman in search of his own personal legend. Just like Santiago, this man had been given Urim and Thummim by Melchizedek. At this moment, Santiago realized that the series of events he had experienced had all guided him toward nearing his personal legend. Even being robbed was part of his journey toward finding the treasure. While traveling across the desert, the Englishman talks to Santiago about the soul of the world. He describes this as the principle that governs all things. If we have an intuition or genuinely want something, then we are immersed in the soul of the world. Santiago read some of the Englishman's alchemy books. He discovered that almost all famous alchemists dedicated their lives to realizing their personal legends. However, Santiago wants to read the world's omens through everyday life, rather than in old books. Part 2, Section 2 Love Helps You Hear, The Soul of the World Santiago falls in love. The caravan finally reached the oasis where the alchemist was waiting for its arrival. This alchemist knew from reading the desert's omens that someone in a caravan sought them out. At this time, a war is taking place between the tribes of the desert. This war makes the desert too dangerous to pass. Therefore, the caravan must stay at the oasis indefinitely. During this time, Santiago meets a beautiful girl at a well. Santiago falls deeply in love with her. He also learns that being in love helps you hear the language of the soul of the world. 
Santiago starts meeting Fatima, the woman he has fallen in love with, daily at the well. He told her about his story and everything he had learned during his journey. Santiago's vision saves him. Santiago is so in love with Fatima that he tells her he wants to marry her. He is even thinking about giving up on his quest so that he could be with her. Fatima tells Santiago that she understands he needs to find the treasure to realize his life goals. While thinking about this alone on the oasis outskirts, Santiago has a vision of an invading army. After consulting one of the caravan's guides, Santiago resolves to tell the oasis chiefs what the desert's omens have shown him. Santiago tells the chiefs. After some deliberation, they decide to prepare themselves for war. This war is against the oasis tradition, which is usually considered neutral ground. The chiefs created a deal with Santiago. If the enemy arrives, the chief will give Santiago a gold piece for every ten enemies slain. However, if Santiago's vision is wrong, he will be killed. Walking home from his meeting with the chiefs, Santiago is pensive but sure that he has made the right decision. Santiago is ambushed. Suddenly, a man with a falcon on his shoulder, dressed all in black and riding a white horse, assails Santiago. The man holds a sword to Santiago's head and demands to know how he knew of the coming of the army. Santiago, frightened, explains to the man about the omens of the desert and his personal legend. Santiago explains he had no choice. To Santiago's surprise, the man understands completely. He takes his leave, telling Santiago to see him if he survives in the coming days. As the horseman rides away, Santiago realizes he has just met the alchemist. The next day, the men of the oasis kill all the intruders. Subsequently, the oasis chieftain awarded Santiago 50 pieces of gold and asked him to become the oasis counselor. Instead, Santiago makes the difficult decision of leaving Fatima and the opportunity of becoming a counselor. He chooses to pursue his personal legend alongside the alchemist. Part 2, Section 3 Nearing the Treasure In the final part of the book, Santiago travels across the desert with the alchemist. Santiago grows restless, wanting to learn more about the alchemist's secrets. However, the alchemist explains that although he has learned much, some things cannot be taught. Instead, Santiago must learn these things himself. The alchemist also explains to Santiago that men complicate matters by seeking their personal legends treasures without living their personal legends. Hence, Santiago is advised to listen to his heart. When nearing the treasure, the two are traveling through dangerous lands. At this moment, Santiago's heart is becoming agitated. Santiago hears from the soul of the world about others who have failed to find their fortune. Subsequently, Santiago is scared and wants to return to Fatima. However, he learns to be at peace with these worries. War catches up with the travelers. War finally catches up with the travelers. A warring tribe captures them and threatens to kill them. To momentarily save their lives, the alchemist gives the tribe all Santiago's money and tells them that Santiago is a powerful wizard. The latter can turn himself into the wind and destroy them. The tribesmen do not believe them but give Santiago three days to prove his powers. Although the alchemist is unaffected, Santiago continues to worry about proving his abilities. On the third day, he goes to the top of a cliff. He tries to speak to the desert and explains he needs to turn himself into the wind to return to his love, Fatima. However, the desert does not know how to do this. Santiago then asked the wind, but the wind was unaware of what love was. Finally, the sun suggests Santiago asks the hand that wrote all. Subsequently, Santiago begins to pray. This prayer was not a request, but an acknowledgement that his heart and the soul of the world were the same. Upon this realization, Santiago turned into the wind. 
The tribesmen arrived to learn that Santiago had disappeared and then reappeared on the other side of the camp. So impressed, the tribal chiefs let the two travelers go and gave them a guide to find their destination. The alchemist leaves Santiago. The next day, the alchemist takes his leave at a Coptic monastery. Santiago continues his travels and finally reaches the pyramids where the treasure is located. He realizes that the real treasure in life is not the gold or jewels that will lie here. Instead, it is the wisdom he has gained on his way to the pyramids. Plus, the love for Fatima he has gained along the way. Santiago would have happily walked back home at this point. However, the alchemist told him to listen to his heart. His heart told him to start digging in the spot where there was a scarab beetle. Upon digging, a group of men approaches him and beats him savagely. They also take all his money. Santiago tries to explain what he is doing and how he has come to be here. However, the men tell him that he is a fool and that they have the same recurring dream. They had dreamt of treasures in Spain. However, they explain that they were not stupid enough to chase after this dream. Santiago had been beaten down, however, he was ecstatic. He now knew where his treasure lay. Lessons to Learn from the Alchemist Fear Fear of failure is the primary obstacle Santiago must overcome on his journey. Throughout the book, wise individuals tell Santiago that this fear becomes irrelevant if you faithfully pursue your dreams. This wisdom is supported by the time Santiago truly pursued his dreams, like turning himself into the wind. Dreams Although dreams are common throughout the alchemist, the most important dream is Santiago's personal legend. Personal legends help enlighten the characters in this book and form communication with the soul of the world. Similarly, you can use life goals to guide you through hardships. On top of this, what makes life interesting is the possibility of achieving a dream. Fate Many characters use the term maktub throughout the book. Maktub means, it is written. Santiago's story shows that fate always cooperates with those in pursuit of their personal legends. Everything in the universe conspires to help you achieve what you desire. Therefore, you should remain focused on your goals and find comfort that your destiny is already written in the world's history. Omens Omens allow you to find your meaning in whatever environment. This is because omens are part of the universal language of the world. We also need to try to find meaning in random events. Every event can be applied to our personal legend and considered another step toward achieving our goals. You'll be happy if you keep your eyes on the present. Life will be a grand party for you, because life is the moment you're living now. Don't be a sheep. The sheep in the alchemist are symbolic. Although Santiago cares for his sheep, he also understands they lack something that he has. He understands his sheep do not have the same capacity to have a personal legend as he does. This is why they follow him wherever he goes. Before Santiago started chasing his dreams, he was like a sheep. He followed others like sheep and was focused on material desires and social acceptance. Identifying your personal legend is vital in preventing you from becoming dependent on others. Hardship helps you find your true personal legend. Santiago's journey to find his personal legend was not easy. The alchemist is filled with challenging times for Santiago. He was robbed, abducted, and threatened with death, then beaten and robbed again. However, Santiago ends the book happier than he was before embarking on this journey. The most important takeaway message from this book is that desiring a goal in life is where we gain happiness. A life of challenges in pursuit of a personal legend is happier than a safe and directionless life. According to Coelho, the secret of life is to fall seven times and to get up eight times. Final Story Shot Summary and Review 
The alchemist tells the mystical story of Santiago. This Andalusian shepherd boy yearns to travel in search of a worldly treasure. Santiago regards this treasure as his personal legend. However, his quest to obtain this treasure leads him to riches far different and far more satisfying. Santiago experiences hardship, love, and friendship. Plus, he learns that staying focused on a life goal provides you with the drive to carry on. The pursuit of the dream becomes more important than the outcome. Beaten and exhausted, Santiago is happier than ever before embarking on this journey. This was the tip of the iceberg. To dive into the details and support the author, get the audiobook for free using the link in the description or the app. Did you like the lessons here? Share to show you care or let us know by contacting our support at support at getstoryshots.com. We'd love to hear from you. Did you like this audiobook summary? Click the like button now to support our channel. If you don't want to miss out on new free audiobook summaries, subscribe and click the bell button. You can also download our free app and enjoy thousands of other summaries of best-selling nonfiction books that are available in text, audio, and animated formats. Story Shots has been featured by Apple, Google, and The Guardian as one of the world's best reading and learning apps. Go to GetStoryShots.com and download the app today.